Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're down here in a strip mine that I have dug out underneath the Mushroom Island, where today, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to be able to start a slime farm. But first, we have to do a bit of table setting. There are a few things we need to cover before we actually start constructing the slime farm itself. And number one is that I have upgraded to the most recent minor update to Minecraft. This is Minecraft 1.20.3 at the time of this recording, although I'm pretty sure that tomorrow we'll be getting a 1.20.4 because there have been some changes to decorated pots that had a very minor issue with them that was basically deleting items that were put in them if you reloaded your world. That should now have been fixed as of the time this episode comes out, so stay tuned for that release in your Minecraft launcher if you play Java Edition and Probably a good idea if you don't mess with decorated pots until you update to the dot four release. But that also means the bat model has changed. And if you were used to the little brown bats that used to fly around in caves, they are now even cuter than they were before. They have massive oversized ears, a little pink nose, and are generally kind of more bat-like to me. They fly around in the right sort of bat-like way. The animation looks really cool. The wings look really cool. I'm a big fan of this change overall. But the other thing I'm a big fan of is slime farms. And down here, I've been digging out an area adjacent to the shore of this mushroom island so that I can dig out into the chunks that change from mushroom fields into the deep frozen ocean that surrounds it. And as you can see here, we have a biome tag there on the left hand side which says we are in deep frozen ocean. As you can also hear around us, that means mobs will start to spawn where they are unable to spawn in a mushroom fields biome. And that is really the purpose of setting this farm up with a mushroom island nearby. You see, of all the environments in Minecraft, mushroom islands are one of those unique ones that has special properties. And we've discussed this in the previous episode about these biomes, but mushroom islands are not a place where hostile mobs can spawn. It's possible for phantoms to spawn in the sky above you since they don't require a surface block in order to spawn and they are kind of biome agnostic. But the only thing that can spawn in a mushroom island biome is mushrooms as long as there are mycelium blocks present. And in this case, this allows us to do some pretty spectacular stuff with spawn proofing an area of a mob farm. Because normally if you want to do some hostile mob spawning, you have to be very specific about how you set up various aspects of your world. You have to make sure that there is no spawnable space nearby in order for hostile mobs to generate. And most of the time that's easy enough, right? You're generating mobs up in the sky in a mob spawner or you're standing in the sky with the mob spawner closer to the surface and you just go and AFK in an area where there is no terrain around except for the platforms of your mob farm. We've done that before in the farm where we generated a bunch of hostile mobs and we get our gunpowder, string, bones and everything else from that farm. In the case of slime though, we cannot really do that around here because slimes spawn in cave layers. So when you start digging around in your world, when you start going caving, you will occasionally find slime spawning below the 40 coordinate on the Y axis. Everything from 40 down to bedrock at negative 64 is a spawning environment for slimes in specific chunks. And if you want to, if you have access to your world seed and you have permission to do this, if you're playing on a multiplayer world, you can load that seed into chunk base or some other kind of tool which will tell you where the slime chunks are in your world. But I've decided to take a slightly different approach to that here because I recognize that there are some people who don't have access to their world seed. If you play on a multiplayer server where the seed isn't known because that would give people with chunk base the opportunity to find structures and stuff that normally players would have to search for in survival mode, then it makes sense that you're not going to have access to the world seed and therefore finding slimes is going to be difficult. Finding the exact chunk in which slimes spawn can be a challenge. Fortunately enough, we've noticed a few slimes spawning around here, and if I press F3 and G to load up the chunk borders, it is a fair assumption, given the amount of slimes that were spawning around here, to guess that this right here is a viable chunk for slimes to spawn in. But we're going to set up a couple of things just to verify that a little bit once we've dealt with these slimes in here, because I want to craft some fences to fence off each of the chunks in here individually, and the slimes won't be able to hop over those fences, which will pretty much guarantee that they are spawning in the chunk that we find them when we return down here. But not every chunk of the world can spawn slimes. That's the most important factor here. Aside from the biome considerations, there is also a distribution consideration 
consideration because there are only, I think, one in ten chunks of the world are slime chunks. So you do have to dig around for quite a while in order to find them. And I've been digging around the exterior of this mushroom island for a little while. As you can see, large areas that are dug out and I've just stacked up chests with all of the resources that I've acquired from this so that we can use the stone and everything a little bit later. But that is just for the slimes that spawn in cave layers because there is actually one other place we know of that slimes can be reliably spawned. And that is, of course, over here in a swamp biome. You'll find slimes spawning on the surface in a swamp biome so you don't have to go into cave layers which makes swamp biome slime farms another viable possibility there are a couple of reasons i'm not starting this out by building a slime farm in a swamp biome though and once again one of those considerations has to do with the availability of this biome on multiplayer servers Considering that 1 in 10 chunks is potentially a slime chunk, it is a lot more likely that you'll be able to find a slime chunk nobody else is using, compared to if you try and find a swamp that nobody else is using, because the only swamps available to do this in your world could be thousands of blocks away, or they could already be claimed for building in by another player. Size is another factor as well, because I've seen some swamps in some worlds that are remarkably small. I have a pretty large one here, so we could come back and set up a slime farm here in future. There's also a little bit of hilly terrain around here, which means even if we are AFK in the sky in order to generate slimes, we might have to do a little bit of spawn proofing around the outside. And the other factor, of course, is moon phase, because when there is a new moon, when the moon is fresh rising in the sky and you cannot see any of the white surface of the moon, slimes will not spawn in swamp biomes at all. The slimes are actually that affected by the moon phase that they do not appear on the new moon, which means that for one day out of every eight, you won't get slimes spawning here at all, and the farm effectively becomes useless for a day. Now, despite all of that, you can get some pretty decent results out of a slime farm in a swamp, so it is going to be worth considering later in the series. But for now, I'm going to focus on the mushroom island setup that I already have, because I put a bunch of work into it already, and this is an example of a slime farm that you can set up basically anywhere. With the caveat, of course, that if you're setting it up anywhere other than with a mushroom island, you will probably need to do a lot of mob proofing around the area, a lot of lighting up of caves and surface in order to make sure that this farm runs at maximum capacity. Anyway, I'm going to return to the mushroom island and we're going to isolate that slime chunk, but then we're actually going to use a similar technique to what we used here in this mountain biome where we dug a chunk all the way down to bedrock using moss because the best way to optimize this area for slime spawning is going to involve the same technique we've used here to dig out an entire chunk of terrain. I'm also going to go and repair my pickaxe in the meantime because my silk touch pickaxe has taken a beating in the mining out of all of those blocks. But first, let's get back to the mushroom island and set up some fences in my strip mine. All right, folks, so back here underneath the mushroom island in our little dig site, I have made sure that the ceiling is three blocks high. That is about the amount of space a slime needs to spawn. As we've seen already, we did get some slime spawning down here, but what I've done is roped off with fence each of the three chunks where these slimes could potentially be generating. Right here, we do have a deep frozen ocean area in this chunk, but it starts to turn into mushroom fields after only three or four blocks on this side of the chunk border. So this would not really be a particularly viable place in which to spawn slimes, even if it was a slime chunk, because half of it being mushroom fields means we're only gonna get slime spawning on the very edges of these blocks here. Whereas all of these, I believe, are completely in the frozen ocean biome. We don't have a single block of mushroom fields anywhere in here, which is ideal. Unlike other hostile mobs, slimes in cave layers can spawn in any light level. So the real trick here is making sure that the entire area is properly lit up and that we don't have any areas where the light level dips down to zero, which can spawn zombies, creepers, etc. Then we simply have to exit the mine here or alternatively back off into a corner and get far enough away from any other spawnable spaces, but it doesn't look like the area around here is going to be large enough for us to do that. So instead, I'm going to do it by flying up into the air and once we get 128 blocks away from any hostile mobs that have spawned down there in cave layers, they will simply despawn, which gives more chance for slimes to spawn in one of the fenced off enclosures when we return to the dig area. And as we glide on down here past the beacon, we should hopefully see one or two slimes hopping around in these areas. If we don't, we simply fly away again and repeat this process. And second time's the charm. We have a slime trapped inside this fenced off area. So that confirms that this chunk here 
is the slime chunk we want to be digging out. That means we can remove the rest of these fences, although it is always possible that we can get two slime chunks side by side. So you might potentially want to keep the fences up and try a couple more times, just in case you got some spawns that were on the left hand chunk and some still generating on the right. So maybe we'll do that just in case, but I am fairly certain that this chunk that's in the middle of this three chunk area here is the one we are going to dig out. Well, this seems to confirm it. We have a couple more slimes down here, but no slimes spawning in the chunk to the left, which means that we just have the one slime chunk to dig out here. So like I said, we can go ahead and remove the rest of the fences here so that we make sure that we are digging out specifically that chunk there. And we're going to dig the entire thing down to to bedrock. But when I say the entire thing, I do mean the entire thing. We need to dig out everything above us as well, and that includes a bunch of water. So we are once again going to have to break out the sand and the sponges to make sure that we can dry out the area of ocean above us and dig a hole all the way down from the surface down to bedrock level. And that will allow us to explore some of the cool ways in which we can influence mob spawning on Minecraft Java Edition. I'm going to take my coordinates inside this chunk here so that I remember exactly where I need to set up the chunk border on the surface. We're going to surround that with sand and then I'm going to dry it out with sponges, use moss to dig on down through here and eventually we'll hit bedrock and we can start building the farm. Well, as with the Guardian farm, we're going to bring a lot of sand with us and I believe this right here is the chunk that we need to be in. Yep, the coordinates match. There we go. This time we're just isolating a 16 by 16 area. We're not doing an entire circular perimeter around it, so i am not brought a huge amount of sand. I've just brought two shulker boxes because this is still a deep ocean biome after all. We are going to find the outside corners of this chunk and we're going to make sure that we place these blocks over the chunk border into the neighboring chunks just to make sure that we don't end up eliminating any spawning space inside of here. This also, by the way, confirms from the surface that this entire thing is an ocean chunk and we don't have any blocks of the mushroom island biome involved here. And once we've established all four of these corners, I'm going to use the redstone assisted method for this again, simply because it's going to save us a bit of time. So we'll set up a couple of blocks either side of our sand here. We'll put a couple of pistons like so, a redstone dust here, a repeater on the block I'm standing on, and a redstone power source feeding into the repeater. Now when we place sand, we should have that automatic automatically pushed by the piston, and if this second piston doesn't update the one below it, then we simply need to swap the position around and place it underneath. That should create a situation in which we can place a whole lot of sand blocks very, very quickly, making sure that there's no kelp underneath here, although it seems like there is no kelp generating in this part of the ocean biome since it's a frozen ocean. Once we're done with this technique, we should have a wall of sand all the way around here, and we can divide the area up into 4x4 four four or 5x5 five five areas that we can simply dry out with the sponges I brought with me. Well, well, that's close enough, and this time we didn't even have to worry about being lasered by any guardians. There is, by the way, an ocean monument somewhere around here, but hopefully it's not close enough that it's going to cause us any complications. It is sponge time, and we're going to approach this in much the same way as we have before. Simply dry out the entire thing all the way down to the gravel. Grab the hoe out of my shulker box so that I can deal with all the wet sponges. Then use torches to take down the sand walls connecting each of these dried out areas. And the main thing here is we won't be able to remove the perimeter wall of sand because that's what what's holding the rest of the ocean back, but this cleanup should not take long. And with this whole area completely dried out, we're going to start digging on down. And I'm actually going to do that without moss at first, simply so I can get hold of all of these blocks and take advantage of the fact that the beacon's radius still covers this chunk, so I still have that haste 2 effect refreshing. Once we get down to deep slate level, however, the haste 2 effect is not going to matter since we can't insta mine deep slate, so that is where the moss will come in. We'll bust out the hoe once again, and we'll moss mine all the way down from about one Y8, where the deep slate really starts, down to negative 64. And at this point, we are about halfway done. I'm down here at Y8, back in the level of our strip mine. Everything above this has been dug out. That really didn't take too long, actually, because we only started from the ocean floor. So obviously, while the sand is up there providing a decent chunk of height, we only had to dig down about 30 to 40 layers before we reached the area that I'd already dug out. So now it's time to dig on down a lot further, but thankfully we have moss and a few composters to help us with that. I'm not going to worry about a laze this time. I am going to do all of the composting just through a couple of double chests and hoppers just to make sure everything gets processed and 
it shouldn't take too long to dig this out. Remember that last time we did this, we were starting at something like Y230, whereas now we are starting a little bit lower down at Y8. So this should maybe take the rest of the afternoon, and then we can start building the slime farm. Although one thing to be aware of, you can hear the sound of bubbles whirling in the background. You can see it in the subtitles there as well. There may occasionally be flooded caves as we dig on down here, because, of course, this is underneath an ocean biome. So any cave layers down here have a chance to be flooded just because they can connect out into the ocean. So it's worth keeping some of those sponges we were using earlier on standby. And remember that we'll only have to section off areas that interact with this chunk. The rest of it, honestly, might be worth leaving flooded because there are going to be many fewer things that will spawn in an area that's flooded versus an area that's just a big dark cave. On the other hand, if we do run into any cave systems while we're digging down here, it's probably a good idea to go around and light them up because that will save us a little bit of trouble searching for those caves when it comes to spawn proofing any other spawnable space that is outside the radius of the Mushroom Island. But as you can now see, I've got a lot of composting to do, so I'm going to set this up on one side just so that we can have a composter running while I do the rest of the moss layers, and I'll see you folks once we're done here. Okay, we are all done with our moss mining project. We are at the level here where we have hit bedrock. There are still a couple of ores in the walls, which I would like to take out. And to be honest, I'm considering replacing the entire walls here with blocks of moss. Considering that I have a ton of moss in storage from our moss mining chunk, and the green really fits the vibe of a slime farm. So I might do that a little bit later. But I want to show you a little bit more about the philosophy of building this on a mushroom island, and exactly why this is going to help us get the best spawn rates possible out of this farm. So I'm going to get rid of these diamond ores here. Oh, it looks like we've got another little layer down here. In the process of digging this chunk out, I also got another stack. All of that is now sat in the shelter box here where yes we have a stack of deep slate diamond ores we even ran into an area where i had been branch mining for diamonds down here previously when i first moved the beacon down to deep slate level just to help us mine out a little bit faster although it's not instant and we've got more bone meal than we started with here in the composter so the next thing i really want to do is show you folks how frequently slimes will end up spawning in here or how quickly the spawns will happen and unlike our hostile mob farm as i mentioned earlier in the video it's not really possible for us to just fly up into the sky to get slimes to spawn down here. Well, it kind of worked, actually. We have a couple of large slimes down there just kind of bopping around, and it may be that there are fairly few other spawnable spaces around here. But remember that spawning happens in a 128 block spherical radius away from the player. So right here, we're actually less than 128 blocks away from that final block down there because bedrock starts to generate at negative 58 on the y-axis, and we're at 64. So we'd have to be a few blocks further up for those slimes to disappear entirely. But on the way down here, there are probably going to be other caves and other spawnable spaces in which hostile mobs can generate. So we might need to go around to a few other chunks in this area and light them up. But if we were to AFK at this level, we'd also be generating stuff in the icebergs around us, because during nighttime, these would all become spawnable spaces. Packed ice, blue ice, and snow blocks are all solid blocks on which mobs can spawn. They will not spawn on regular ice, because that's a transparent block, but a lot of these packed ice icebergs still become spawning spaces for hostile mobs during the right conditions. And we want to take advantage of the mushroom island being here, the fact that we'll get zero hostile mob spawns in there. So we're going to choose an AFK spot, a place to stand where the farm can operate, but where we are surrounded by the terrain of the Mushroom Island. And we can't do that on the surface, really, because, of course, the radius is spherical. So the further away we stand on the surface over here, the more likely it is that we won't get any spawns in here at all, because we'll be too far away on a diagonal. So we're going to pick an AFK spot that is slightly closer to our slime chunk here. We're going to hop back into the confines of our strip mine, and I've actually cut out a little dugout in the wall and tested whether or not we still load the slime chunk from there. This is only really going to be possible to show you with the assistance of a second account logged in in spectator mode. So I'm going to open my world to the local area network, enable any accounts that log in to join us in spectator mode, and I'll get my camera account in here to show you what I'm up to. Because this little tunnel I've cut away into the wall here puts me 128 blocks away from the blocks on the far side of that slime chunk. So we are still loading everything up to the back wall of the slime chunk as we are right here. And if I log in with my camera account, we find that, oh, <laughs> it's nighttime. So a lot of other mobs are spawning down there. But look how many mobs are spawning in such a small space. Once again, these are the kinds of rates that we typically only see from a hostile mob farm. And that is 
a couple of slimes spawning in there alongside all of the other creepers and skeletons and everything else. Well, I'm going to make sure that I sleep for the night, and I'm actually going to dig a little bit further down this tunnel so that the rest of the mobs in that chunk will despawn and we'll just be left with an environment that spawns the slimes for us. And there we go. As we can see, a few of the mob drops are still left around from the mobs that burned before I did that, but nothing is spawning in that area. Now, if I head back down the tunnel to about here, just past this gold ore, and we switch back to the camera account, you'll notice that there's a slime spawning down there. Maybe a little bit further along so that we can get slightly closer to the chunk, and yes, there we go. We're getting a bunch of slime spawns. Three large slimes has already made it in here, and there's a couple more other slimes spawning as well. And that's not even taking into account the fact that behind some of these walls, there may be some other caves which we will need to light up to optimize the spawning rates inside of here. So why are slimes spawning here so fast? The fact that we're standing in a chunk completely surrounded by mushroom islands is one factor, but that's not the only thing going on here. The reason we have dug out this entire chunk in order to spawn slimes is not just because we can maximize the area in which the slimes will spawn, it all has to do with height-based mob spawning, which is a concept that is really exclusive to Java editions, so apologies to the Bedrock Edition players. Unfortunately, that's not something we can take advantage of in Bedrock. But in layman's terms, the way Minecraft Java Edition calculates mob spawns is from the bottom of the world to the top. It will search for any valid spawnable blocks from this lowest area of the world where we can have mobs spawning to the top of the world if there are any blocks further up. Once it finds the topmost block in a chunk and decides whether or not it's going to spawn anything there, the game resets this spawn cycle and starts from the bottom of the world again, gradually going up towards the top. So that process can reset even faster if we lower the overall height within the chunk. If we make sure that there are no blocks higher up for the game to check, it will simply reach the top of whatever set of platforms we set up here for slimes to spawn, realize that that's the highest block in the chunk, and immediately start spawning stuff at the bottom of the farm again. And so while we could fill this entire chunk with spawning platforms for slime, everywhere between here and Y40 would be valid spawnable spaces for K slimes, it actually makes sense for us to only install a few platforms down here and just rely on them spawning slimes as quickly as possible. The higher up we build in this chunk, the slower spawns will actually be towards the bottom because the game will have to keep checking further and further up in the chunk. In the case of the hostile mob spawner we built a little while ago, we were able to isolate spawns on the platforms we built by AFKing in the sky, basically allowing stuff to spawn on those platforms because it was the only valid spawnable space. If we had the opportunity to build a hostile mob farm down here, somewhere around the boundary of this mushroom island, the spawns would be lightning fast and we'd be able to clear the platforms off a lot more quickly because the mob cap would fill up very, very fast. So that's the reason behind digging out this entire chunk. It's not just to have access to the layers on which slimes will spawn, it is so we can maximize the spawn rates inside this farm and get a whole bunch of slime in a relatively short amount of time. So I'm going to take down all of the composting stuff that I've been using to compost the moss, and we're going to build up a series of platforms on which the slimes will spawn. But first, since we're at bedrock and we know we can't dig any deeper, we're going to set up the mechanism which is going to kill the slimes after they're done spawning. And that's going to require a little bit of extra preparation. If we're going to be spawning slimes down there super quickly, we also want a mechanism that can get rid of them super quickly. And sometimes mobs in Minecraft will take a little while to die if we're, say, luring them onto campfires or something like that. And so we're going to take an alternative method to this where we're actually going to send the slimes through to the nether. Thanks to the amount of obsidian I was able to collect from one of the obsidian towers in the end dimension before we reset the towers by fighting the dragon. But with each of these platforms we're going to set up, we're going to have a large portal that will basically cover the entire width of the chunk. And now hapless slimes are going to be lured in towards those obsidian portals where they're going to be transported to the nether, will hop out into something else that will kill them, but that removes them from this dimension, which means the mob cap here in the overworld can immediately refresh, recognize that there is space for it to spawn some more slimes, and generate some more for us to lure in in much the same way. We'll need a bunch of campfires in order to kill the slimes once they're in the nether. In fact, we're probably going to use soul campfires because they're that little bit faster. But with a handful of those, the only other thing we will need is some iron blocks and some carved pumpkins, because we're going to be luring the slimes towards these portals using iron golems. And I'll bring a couple of shulker boxes of moss so that we can use those to decorate the walls of the farm. I think we're just about ready to head back over there, so let's return to the mushroom island and talk about the killing mechanism. I'm going to stash the obsidian away in this shulker box for now because the first 
thing we need to do is layer up this floor by one block. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take advantage of this lowest level we're at right now, negative 59, because the bedrock here is not spawnable. It is effectively, the game sort of treats it like a transparent block, it just is not spawnable for hostile mobs. So we need to make sure in order to take full advantage of the lowest possible spawning area in this chunk, that the floor is made out of some sort of solid block. In fact, to conserve materials, it might be a good idea to make this floor out of slabs. And alongside that, mobs will typically choose to pathfind towards solid blocks before they will choose to pathfind towards slabs. So if we use slabs as the platform here, it's actually more likely that the slimes will immediately want to start pathfinding towards all the solid blocks around them. We could in theory make this even more effective by removing the layer of solid blocks below these slabs, but by that point the slimes will have targeted the iron golems anyway, so there isn't much point in putting in the extra effort. Now with this floor of slabs in place, we're going to return to the obsidian that's going to form the portals around each side here. And of course, we're going to have to make each of these at least three blocks high with the blocks of the portal frame starting at the same level as this floor of slabs so that the slimes will simply be able to waltz in at floor level. We're going to make sure each of these portals actually shares a corner block right there, so that's going to be the pillar that supports both this portal here and this portal on this side. And in the center of the portal we're going to dig out a two block wide alcove which an iron golem is going to be standing in. We want to make sure the iron golem does not escape, so we're going to use some fences in order to hold it back. And initially we will need to dig this alcove out a little bit more to make sure that the iron golem can spawn in here with the T-shape being three blocks wide, and that it won't suffocate by spawning in the blocks behind it, which does happen sometimes. So we're going to place a pumpkin on the top there, we're going to shear that, and yep, it looks like it's suffocating in these blocks immediately in front of it at first, there we go. We can push it over slightly, grab a bit more deep slate to fill up this recess in the wall, and the iron golem should be stored here in this little 2x2 space. This iron golem is bait to lure the slimes in, and if we break out a couple more blocks to either side like so, the slimes will be able to see the iron golem a little bit better. Line of sight is the important thing here. Can a slime that spawns right here see this iron golem and be tempted to pathfind towards it, or will it end up seeing the iron golem on this side? We can carve away the walls behind here to make that slightly easier, as long as this enclosure doesn't let slimes in or the iron golem out. But the slimes going in there are going to be caught in the nether portal here anyway, and they'll be instantly transported to the nether. Unlike the player who always takes a while to generate in the nether, mobs will not find the same restriction applies to them. And down here in the bowels of this basalt delta, I guess, is where we're going to be setting up the killing mechanism for this farm. Only, we're not going to be setting up at this height, because this is a height of Y55, and that's potentially going to conflict with another nether portal we want to set up a little later. You see, with all of these portals being set up at Y-58, and we're going to have portals on all four sides here, we need to make sure that each of those portals matches exactly to the one in the nether. We're going to take the median coordinates of all of them, so we're actually going to use the blocks in the center of this space to calculate the coordinates of the portal we need to make in the nether, which according to my calculations is going to be at negative 607, negative 269. So we're going to go in there with a bunch of obsidian and make a portal that links up to this one and the other three around the perimeter of this chunk. And we're going to aim to do that as low down in the world as possible. So this is potentially going to be dangerous territory considering we are digging down through a basalt delta into what looks like a bottomless lava lake. Yeah, negative 607, negative 269 is directly under this, so I'm going to go and get some fire resistance potions. <laughs> Okay, so I found a decent landmass where I could dig down through lava lake level in the nether. We are down here at the bottom of the nether, basically where bedrock starts to generate. We're at Y5 right now. Didn't find any more ancient debris, unfortunately, but in this room, we are going to be suspending a nether portal centered on the coordinates that we took earlier. Negative 607, negative 269. We're going to make sure that this is at least three blocks off the ground though because we need to set up a series of things around here that are going to both kill the slimes and collect their drops. So we need to make sure that this one starts up here. We're going to leave a three block gap and begin our obsidian for the portal frame here. I basically made this nine blocks wide and the moment of truth comes when we light this with a flint and steel. Hopefully we should return to the coordinates of our slime farm. There we go and be back by our iron golem. Now let me step on through this portal one more time just to make sure that that is linked to the one at the bottom of the nether. Perfect, should be no problem to connect these since the Y coordinates are going to match much more closely than the portal we generated there 
on the surface of the nether. Just to be 100% sure, I am going to go back and remove that surface nether portal a little bit later, just to make sure that nothing interferes with the operation of this farm. But we can make sure that this wall is now completely filled in with all of these leftover materials from digging out the basalt delta. And we can even cover up this pillar of the portal here because we just want to make sure that the slimes, whenever they spawn in here, are immediately going to try and jump out of the portal and will jump into what's going to kill them, which in this case is going to be the sole campfires. But we're going to add another layer of stuff on top of that just in case. Because this portal is going to be loading and unloading the area around it quite frequently, and as a result, every time this portal loads, there is an additional chance that it can spawn a zombie piglin. And zombie piglins are going to be immune to damage from campfires, meaning that eventually a bunch of zombie piglins would just be hanging around in here, and their hitboxes can potentially block the slimes from jumping out of the portal. So we're going to lay in a layer of powder snow, which is going to prevent the zombie piglins from surviving in this farm, since they'll eventually take freezing damage and expire. That that should be the case anyway, but before we go any further, we need to set up a couple of things. Using some of the iron I brought here to make iron golems, we are still going to have to make a bunch of hoppers to go underneath where the farm is built in the nether, since we need something to collect the drops from below the soul campfires. And it is possible to just limit it to one side so that the slimes only have to jump out on one pad of hoppers and you end up limiting the amount of materials that you spend on this farm, but I think we're going to do it on both sides just so the slimes have more room to jump, and that should hopefully clear them out of this space a little faster. Then we're going to add our soul campfires on top of this, making sure that we don't take too much damage by stepping on them ourselves. And then we're going to return to base to resupply and pick up some powdered snow. To obtain the powdered snow, we'll need to bring a bunch of buckets and a couple of shelker boxes, since buckets of anything, including powdered snow, cannot be stacked, so you can only have 27 per shelker box. And I'm pretty sure up here on the slopes of my meadow is a patch of powdered snow that I've run into once or twice. It's usually fairly easy easy to spot, has a slightly different, more grainy texture than regular snow, and you start to sink into it. That frosty vignette pops up and you'll start to take freezing damage if you stand in it for too long. We're going to right click on it with a bucket to obtain some, and we're going to take a bunch of these buckets back over to our slime farm in the nether, where some slimes have already made it through and started dying on the campfires, thanks to the fact that I loaded the farm chunks on the way back. And as you can see, one of them has jumped out the other side, so we can kill this one manually, and we should have a little bit of slime waiting for us here in the chest. Nice. So we can continue to fill up this pad of hoppers, making sure that all of the drops from this side of the farm go into a separate chest. I've crafted a bunch of soul campfires that we can place on top of here. We'll go out of the portal and then back through so that we can use the edge of the obsidian portal frame as somewhere to stand. And from there, we're going to be placing these buckets of powdered snow one at a time over top of the soul campfires. Now, normally if a mob was on fire when it stepped onto powder snow like this, it would end up destroying the powder snow block. But I'm not certain that that happens to mobs that are being damaged by soul campfires, since the sprite of the mob itself isn't actually on fire when they're taking damage. The source of the damage is still technically speaking fire, but it's not setting the mob on fire to do it. So it'll be interesting to see if this actually works the way I expected. An additional benefit to this though, is that the slimes will have a hard time jumping out of the powder snow, so there is very little chance of them ending up going back into the portal after they've jumped down onto these campfires, which shouldn't happen anyway since the campfires will deal enough damage to them that they won't really be able to move in the way they normally do. For now though, let's head on back through to the overworld where we want to set up one more thing that will make sure this farm runs efficiently, and that is a spot for us to AFK at this level of the farm. And for that we need to make sure we know the coordinates of this portal, and then we need to head south back towards the direction direction of our Mushroom Island, and we want to set up an AFK spot that is going to stand the player 127 blocks away from the portal on that back wall of the farm. The portal there has a coordinate of negative 2160, so somewhere around the 2040 range should be adequate. And if we look down there, I think I can already see a couple of slimes generating, along with some skeletons and stuff, because it's actually nighttime on the surface right now. So if nothing else, that was a great reminder to us that we need to make sure this area is adequately lit up as well, and we can do that very simply with a few torches just coming in here from the corners. Eventually, these nether portals giving off their own light should end up lighting up most of the farm, but we do need to make sure the central blocks here are lit as well, so we'll place a few torches around the perimeter and that should prevent any mobs that aren't slimes from spawning in this space. But here is one of the clever aspects of this farm, because we're now going to head all the way down to the end here, where our AFK spot is going to be, and we're going to set up a nether portal. We're going to make sure we have the coordinates of this portal, and then we're going to step back through to 
into the nether on the other side. Because that way we can set up a nether portal from our AFK spot to the collection point of the slime farm. And hopefully these coordinates should match up so that it doesn't end up connecting to the portal that's actually in the slime farm, it just connects to this portal here. We will need to do a little bit of testing just to make sure this portal goes back and forth correctly. And yep, yeah, it looks like the slimes have been able to come through here. So unfortunately, we are going to have to adjust that slightly. That is the problem, unfortunately, with overworld coordinates being able to go into negative coordinates on the Y axis, whereas the nether really cannot. So instead, I'm going to chug another fire resistance potion. We're going to build some sort of easy access to this from the surface in the nether so that we can hop down here and retrieve the slime from the farm whenever we want to. And right now, there's actually been quite a bit. But with some clever matching of portal coordinates, it might be possible to create a nether portal that goes to the collection area of your slime farm without interfering with the running of the farm itself. For now though, it simply seems too dangerous to attempt. I think what we'll do instead is have a bubble column that takes us to and from our AFK point in the overworld, and at the top of that bubble column we can leave a surface portal that leads to the surface in the nether with a ladder leading down to the slime farm output. I think that's probably the best way to approach this. So I'm going to take the coordinates of this little patch here, and that will ensure that we can set up a safe fall and a water bubble column back up. But by now you know the theory, so I can build up the remaining portals around these four walls. We can start our next platform up here in order to have another spawning platform for the slimes, and we'll probably stack those three high so that we end up with three spawning platforms all relatively low down to take advantage of that higher spawning rate that occurs at lower elevations. I might need to go and get some more obsidian from the end so that we can make a few more of these portals, but once that's done we'll make sure that there is a portal in the overworld on the surface that connects to the surface on the nether, and both of those are connected to the AFK spot and the output of our slime farm. Then if I've got time, I'm going to turn the walls of all of this into moss, because I think having this entire chunk covered in green is going to be a pretty spectacular colour scheme. But that sounds like a task that I'll complete on a live stream, and so I'll see you folks on the other side. Hey folks, welcome back to my absolutely glorious slime farm chunk. I've gotten a decent amount of the walls up here covered in moss. I stopped basically at the edge of that strip mined out area at Y8 where we began the deep slate portion of this and we've covered the entire walls in moss blocks which looks kind of hectic but we're actually not going to be seeing too much of this farm anyway. I still think that turning the entire thing into effectively a tube of the same material is pretty cool though. But we have all of our iron golems installed and this is the topmost platform of what we have now, five platforms, each with their own set of nether portals and their own iron golems directing slimes through to that farm spot in the nether. A couple of remedial things we had to do in the process of this though, I realized that the zombie piglins that were spawning in these portals could actually get into here and if they walked close to the iron golems, the iron golems would attack them. I don't have a problem with that necessarily, but I had a problem with the fact that the piglins were sometimes able to damage the iron golems, hitting them with the sword at least once before they died, and that was causing some of our iron golems to break. You can repair an iron golem by right-clicking on them with an iron ingot, but what I did instead to resolve the issue overall was to put in these trap doors here, which prevent the piglins, who are two blocks tall, from walking any further towards the enclosure where the golem is. Here is an example of that, actually. A piglin managed to spawn in this portal. It's trying to walk towards the golem, and the golem is distracted by it, but since the golems don't need to do anything in this farm except stand there and allow slimes to be lured in towards them, the piglin and the golem are going to be absolutely fine here. The golem won't take any damage, and the piglin will eventually just despawn or walk back into the portal. But of course, this is a farm that we need to stand 128 blocks away from to really see it in action. So I'm going to bring my camera account back in so that you can see how fast the slimes actually spawn while we're standing over here at our AFK point. Speaking of the AFK point, I now have a bubble column set up all the way from the bedrock level that we dug out to around Y58 in my strip mine over here, and we have a safe fall with a chest in there so we can simply walk out and AFK in this area. Perhaps for safety I might put in a door or something here to prevent anything that might possibly spawn in the relatively few spawning spaces there are around here from going in here and ambushing me while I was AFK. But for the moment, I'll bring in my camera account and we can take a look at what's happening in the farm while I'm standing here in this spot. First of all, over here in the slime farm, our platforms are merrily spawning slimes, and you won't find a ton of slimes spawning on every single platform all of the time, but they are actually so quick in moving through the portals 
that there is a chance of a bunch of slimes spawning and then not being there the next second you take a look. The longest a slime ever has to travel is if it spawns in the center of this platform and makes its way towards the nether portal, at which point it'll be through in a matter of seconds anyway. So it's fair to say, I think, that the slimes are never going to fully occupy the mob cap, and we don't really need to worry too much about adding additional platforms to this setup, increasing the height of the chunk, because slimes can spawn anywhere between the bedrock level and Y40, and that's positive 40, not negative 40, by the way, so it should be possible to increase the yield of this slime farm if we ever feel like we need to. But to be quite honest, I don't know if we will need to, because this thing already produces a lot of slime on its own. Flipping back over to my main account here, I'm going to briefly go through to the nether, which will allow my spectator camera account to teleport to the nether as well. I'll show you the setup I have for collecting slime from the farm, and then you'll be able to see the farm in action. So this nether portal over here teleports me to another location in the Basalt Delta, very close to the original portal that I had set up to go to the Mushroom Island. It's the one over there that the Magma Cube is currently standing on top of. But in the space behind this new portal, I dug a couple of tunnels directly downwards to see if I could find a space to access the farm output from, and when you know, I came out exactly where I set up the nether portal where I initially tried to get access to the collection area of the farm. We don't have the nether portal here, what we do have is a moss carpet on top of a powder snow block. And powder snow actually breaks your fall in the similar way to how a bucket of water would, except you can place carpet on top of it and it will still break your fall. This might just be a Java edition thing, so exercise caution before you use that on bedrock. But it's a really great way of having a safe fall into here. You don't actually fall into the powder snow block, but you don't take any fall damage. Then we've got a ladder back up here to the surface, which is probably the slowest part of this whole endeavor, but that's because you can't set up bubble columns of water in the nether because water cannot exist here. Then if we come around the corner to the collection mechanism, you will see that there is now a great deal of slime in here, along with a couple of zombie piglin drops from the part of the farm I mentioned earlier, where the piglins will actually come through the nether portal, will walk into the powdered snow, will take frost damage since they can't take fire damage, and will be killed by the farm and drop occasional gold nuggets and rotten flesh. But the majority of the output from this farm is slime balls, and it is really good at what it does. Teleporting my camera account to here in this farm, I do have particles completely turned off, and unfortunately I'm still seeing a lot of the campfire smoke, but pretty soon it will be apparent as I go back to the farm in the overworld how much slime is going to come through that portal. Back here on the Mushroom Island, we're going to drop down the safe drop that I left for myself here, and I'm just going to stand in this spot waiting for some slimes to spawn. We'll flip over into the camera account here in the nether, and you can see that the slime spawning has already begun. <laughs> the slimes come through in ones and twos at first, and then the spawning rates just go through the roof. They will actually push each other out of the nether portal as well, and you'll see that some of the larger slimes occasionally have trouble getting into the spot where all of the campfires are, but sooner or later, the other slimes will break down. They'll take enough damage that they break down into the smallest type of slime, and that's when they will drop slime balls. At this rate, I think I could probably fill up both double chests from empty if I AFK'd here for about half an hour. I will probably benchmark this farm at some point in future so that you can know the exact rates, but honestly, it is a very effective farm. And you might be wondering if you need a second account in the nether to keep this farm loaded, and the answer to that is simply no. A nether portal like this will load a 3x3 chunk area around it for about 15 seconds every time an entity comes through. And an entity is coming through pretty much constantly with this farm since the slimes are consistently showing up, so it really shouldn't be any kind of problem to have this farm loaded in single player with just your player in the overworld, because even without that, the slime balls have been accumulating here in the nether. I've not really had my camera account logged in in the nether at any point in this other than this demonstration and the brief time I showed it on the live stream. So you can have my word on that, this slime farm is going to operate regardless of whether or not you have a player in the nether or not. The one remaining aspect we do need to pay attention to, because this is still potentially a factor for the rates of the farm overnight, is the fact that we still have some icebergs out there in the frozen ocean which can still count as spawning spaces while we're down here at the farm. I have a feeling that they won't be close enough to the player since we are down there at bedrock level and these are all on the surface, but as you can see there's a creeper over there, there's a couple of other mobs out there in the bergs, I just looked directly at an enderman which is probably a mistake for the enderman, not for me, I'm pretty good at taking on enderman at this point. <laughs> but I think it is safe to say that this is a pretty solid 
solid slime farm, and when we return to the nether, those double chests will need emptying, we can turn all of the output into slime blocks, and in future episodes we're going to take a look at what slime blocks can do, because this is really going to be a turning point in the technology we can use in this world. And I've left myself a little bit of room down here so that we can add another double chest if we need to, but that is almost full. I reckon we're going to take a lot of this away right now. Alright, two gold ingots worth of gold nuggets, and over nine stacks of slime blocks from that. I think that's pretty solid so far. We'll head back to the overworld and we'll call it a day. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.